Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Sean. I'm a full-time clothing reseller on eBay. And today, I'm gonna answer a question from a viewer. This gentleman's name is Ior Meliodas. I know I probably pronounced that incorrectly, but he asked a video of how I list so quickly and like a tutorial over my inventory system. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of that. We're gonna go through one shirt where I explain like exactly what I'm doing, and then I'm gonna go through one full speed. We're gonna do the same for the computer as far as listing goes. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to take notes because these steps will take you to the next level if you want to move items fast through your store. First up, we got my photo set up. It's gray background. I copied daily refinements because he seemed to be doing it the best whenever I first started clothing. And I got a couple cheap lights from Walmart. I would put a little more money into this, but all in all, it's about $100 into this photo setup. I use an iPhone 7 Plus. I take my photos in square mode. So that's the first thing we need to do is get our camera ready. Next, I have a rolling rack behind me. What I normally do is I bring that rolling rack all the way up to my back so that I just have to turn and grab the item and turn back to the photo section and I don't have to walk back and forth. But for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and grab one. All right, first item we're going to list, it's a Polo Ralph Lauren. It's a plain XL in red. So I always put the hanger in from the top going down. I leave this unbuttoned so that it's big enough in the neck to put it here. And if you can see, there is like a slight pinhole on the back. So I will note that in the listing. It's not a huge deal, but you don't want to have any surprises for your buyer. They want to know exactly what they're getting when they're ordering online. So I always take an extra second just to straighten up the shirt because the profile shot is your most important shot in my opinion. The second photo is going to be of the brand label or the size tag. Next, if the size tag has the contents on the back, you're going to take a picture of the material contents. If not, you'll save that for the last photo on the front side of the shirt. Polo Ralph Lauren sometimes has it up top, but in this shirt, it's going to be down here. So we're going to move on to the buttons. I always take a picture of the buttons here because sometimes there's three buttons or four, and sometimes there's two or one. And I think that's an important feature for the buyer. I know that I only have shirts where I like two buttons instead of three. We're going to take a picture of the logo here. And after that, since there's no flaws on the front, we're going to go straight to the material tag. And then we're going to flip the shirt over at this point. So from this point, we'll take the back shot of the item. And then we're going to take a picture of that flaw that I pointed out earlier. It's very minute, but I like to put it in here anyway. Next, we're going to take the shirt down, do the pit to pit measurement, and then do the length measurement. I have a ruler to my left that I can just grab with one hand. When I place it down, I only take a photo of the measurement on the right side where it's ended. I don't do an overshot because then I'll get some of this background that I don't want in the photo. I next put the ruler under my arm and I grab this corner and then this bottom part of the shirt and I turn it like so. And then you have to hold the phone at an angle this way so that the camera orientation doesn't flip on you. From there, I just grab the shirt, I fold it in on itself I fold it in again and down, and then I fold it one more time. And once it's like this, I fold it together so I can grab it with one hand. With my left hand, I'm gonna reuse this bag here and just put a new label on it, but I have all my clear poly bags here. And then I place it down back on the photo section. I have this roll of labels. These are custom labels. You can set up an Excel spreadsheet. You go from zero to 1,000. And then if you have a Rolo or a Dymo, you have to find labels for it that are, I prefer to be across like this because they're big enough for me to see. You have to figure out how to do the mailings and then get that transferred from Excel to Word so that you can print out a thousand at a time. I keep this roll up here. My inventory works from the first item being item number one all the way till a million or however many items I end up listing in my eBay career. No SKU number ever repeats. You just move on to the next one. So I'll grab the label at this point and I'll place it on the bag, replacing this label here. And I take a picture of the label as my last photo. And this helps you in case you forget to type it in in the custom SKU section. You can go to the item and look at the photos and see where that, where that custom SKU is. Once the label is put on the bag, you just put it inside the box right behind the next one. If you can see here, you have all the labels in order numerically. 
and you just kind of continue going on from there. So I'm going to show you the next shirt at full speed and then we'll move on to the listing section. This one's going to be another Ralph Lauren. It's a purple with yellow stripes. There you have it. After I finished the edit for this video, I wasn't thrilled with how this shot looked of me going over the listing process. So I did a screen share at the end of the video and I'm gonna put a timestamp down below if you guys would rather just check that out. But this is gonna be more detailed explanation of my process. It's just the shot isn't as good as the one I did at the end. Okay, now we're over here at the laptop. And the only thing I didn't show you guys was transferring the photos. And if you see over here on my external monitor, I have both sets of photos. I put the bar over here as tight as you can go to the left because I want these as large as possible. And the reason I want them as large as possible is because I want to be able to see the size and some of the distinct features of the clothing so that I don't have to zoom in or click into the item to see that. I also have two windows here on the other screen. I have my store opened up so that I can search my own store. As you can see here, I have 5,036 items. And then I have a second tab open, which is just like your regular eBay tab. And then I can do a distinct search here if I need to actually look up comps. For these items, they're both in my store, but I can show you an example of how I would look up comps. This is what I would normally do. I would go to my store, and since this is a Ralph Lauren XL short sleeve red Pima soft touch, I can put in keywords to get as close to that exact shirt as possible. For example, I would put Ralph short polo, and then I could put XL and Pima, and this would probably bring up a Pima XL. So I have six shirts that have Ralph Short Polo XL Pima in there. I'm most likely gonna pick this red one. This one says Pima Interlock. So all I would have to do is click on it. It brings open a new window and then you click sell similar. The reason I do this is because this shirt is already filled out almost to exactly what it needs to be. So you see my old items, this is 125.40. I'm gonna delete the photos and then I'm gonna drag over and grab all these and transfer. Now, while it's transferring, I'm gonna check the title out. Now, the key to doing this thing fast is as you come down, you don't wanna to have to go back up for any reason. Once you go down, it needs to be exactly how it needs to be. So typically, I wouldn't move any photos, but because we did have a flaw in the back here, I moved the flaw to the second photo, and then I put the back as the next photo. And the reason I do that is because somebody's gonna see the first photo and then they're gonna see the second one and be like, oh, what's this flaw? And then the third photo is gonna be on the back. So say it was like a huge hole in the back. Then they'd see, oh, the, well, the flaw is on the back and not the front. And because this is just a tiny little hole, I'm just gonna put hole on back. Most of the times customers are okay with this because it's covered by the collar and you could put that in there if you wanted to, but I only keep it really basic. I say hole on front, stain on front, torn on front, or I say it on back. And that's really all I do for that. The rest of these are in perfect order. And then as you see, the SKU is the last number here. So then the title is the next line. This shirt is not the Pima interlock. So we're gonna delete interlock here and we're gonna write in soft touch. Now we have Polo Ralph Lauren short sleeve polo men's XL red Pima soft touch. That is a good title for this shirt. It's only 64 out of the 80 characters, but I'm really not gonna put any more because this is gonna be enough to get it sold. While you have the cursor here at the end of your title, you're gonna to wanna to press Control and A to highlight the title, and then you're gonna press Control C so that you have that copied and saved. Then you're gonna change the custom SKU, and I don't have to scroll up to see the SKU, I can just look to my right to see the SKU, and it's 140.29. I use this 10 key, I think it's very important for you to use a 10 key just because it's much faster than trying to find the keys up top. All right, so we scroll down to the next one, it's already in the correct category, 
It has the correct brand filled out already. It has the correct size, color. Now, as far as the additional item specifics, when it comes to the additional features on the listings, I don't put very much in there and you're gonna see here. So performance activity, I don't put anything. Fa fabric wash, I don't put anything. The sleeve length is very important. And then I don't put a product line, I don't put a theme. The fit is important, so I put regular. The pattern is solid in this one. And then all these other ones, the fabric type, the material, the model, the features, I don't put any of that in there. And then I do put collared. We can go down to show more and you guys can see I don't have any of this filled out. I don't put, uh, closure is one you could put out. I'll put button, but I mean, it's not necessary in my opinion. The collar style I don't think is necessary as well. Unless it is a button down like long sleeve button shirt, I will put button down. But for this, it's a spread collar, but I'm not gonna put it. I don't put any of these. I don't even fill out no for these. Cause I want the listing to be the photos and then just like a few things that they can read. Because if you have like 50 things, like when you're looking for a shirt on eBay and you're just looking at all that stuff, it just seems kind of cluttered and confusing. And people know they're looking for a red short sleeve Pima cotton polo. So that's what they're gonna get with my listing. Item description. This is the condition description section. So if you can read here, it says, this item is used, therefore measurements may differ from new condition measurements. Please see the measurements in photos. If you're not sure about the size, flat lay the item on your own and compare measurements with ours. Now that's already pre-populated because the listing's done. But if I were to type this out, it would definitely take a long time to type all that stuff. So instead, I use text blaze. And what text blaze does is you just press two keys, backslash and then a letter, and then it pre-populates a message that you have saved on text blaze. So I can do that and it saves me a ton of time writing all this. This does have the hole on the back. So we're gonna write hole on back. And that's the only thing that I end up typing when it comes to the condition description. Similar to, for the description section, you can see here it has the top line our, um, that's our old title. So we're gonna highlight this and do control V because we still have it saved from up there whenever we did the control C. And then we have our description. Our description is the same for every item, unless it's a hard good, it's a little different, but it says our items are carefully examined, measured photograph and stored in a smoke-free environment. We do our best to describe accurately and measure approximately at the time of listing, but just in case we offer 60 day free returns on unused, unworn items. 100% authenticity guarantee. Items typically ship same or next business day. And then in blue, I put, please contact me first. I'll do my best to answer all questions and resolve any issues. Thank you for stopping by. So just the same with the condition description. This one is going to have a text play save key. For me, it's backslash D and then it has two X's here. And that just shows me where I need to highlight to post the um, title. So I'll do it one more time. And that's how fast it is. Now I have one more text place for hard goods and it's going to be this one that's a little bit more basic. And as you can see, what I took out was the measurement section because if it's like a video game or something, it's just going to say stored in smoke free environment, 100% authenticity guarantee, item ship, same next business day, and then my message for them to contact me. But whenever you have these things saved, it just saves you a whole lot of time and a whole lot of headaches so you don't have to worry about fumbling around and, and putting, you know, I've washed this three times. So I don't repeat the hole in the back though. That is one thing that some people do in the description. I just have it here for the condition. Moving down to price. I have price buckets for a lot of my items. Most of my items, I put at $15.99 plus $8.99 shipping. Since this one has a hole, I take $3 off of it and I'll put $12.99 plus shipping. And I'll pretty much accept any offer on this shirt over like $5. So five plus $8.99, that's gonna put me at $13.99. And you know, I consider this shirt a mistake. I should have seen the flaw in the back before buying it. I think because the item is Pima Soft Touch, it's gonna be able to carry it to this price point or maybe they'll offer $10 and I'll accept that as well. After the price, we have our shipping. The main shipping is the same for everybody. And then the package weight and package dimensions, I don't fill out anymore. If I did calculated shipping, I would definitely fill this out, but because everything's flat rate, I don't bother filling it out. We have the promoted listing section next. I don't promote anything. I never have. I know a lot of people do promote listings, but I just have never tried it. And I think I'm giving a pretty good deal. I don't think promoted is necessary. Then we have our preferences, which is eBay payments. And then the charity. I have, I've never really done a charity on eBay either. So then it says list for free. So I just do save later. And then we have our draft here, one of one. 
and this is the item. I'm gonna show you what I would do with this item if I did not have uh, one in my store, if I had to look up comps to see how much it would sell for. So I would write the exact title of the shirt that I had if I was looking up comps. Ralph Lauren Polo, short sleeve polo men's XL red Pima soft touch. So I would copy and paste this and then I would go to my second tab that I had set up. So it looked like this with the two tabs in the beginning. Then I copy and paste. Now one thing you want to put is used at the end. But after it's copy and pasted, then I put use because when I copy and paste again, I don't want use to be in there. So that's outside of the copy. You can see 50 listings here. They do have some that are slightly different and then they have people that are promoting that's kind of muddying up the waters. You can see here somebody has a similar background and they price theirs at $15.99 plus $8.99 shipping. So they may have copied me or somebody else. Then you have all these other ones. So some are priced, priced pretty high. You have one eighteen eighty eight plus five ninety. dollars You can kind of see the generic price people are trying to get for this shirt is like $25. And then you got this listing on a door, which I don't think is a very good one. And yeah, so what you want to do though is look at the solds. You would go to advanced tab and then you click sold here, but you do not click any of these other ones. And then you hit search. So there's 11 sold out of the 50 listings. So that's not the greatest sell through. And then when you look at the prices, this one sold more because it was striped. This one's blue and they put red because of the horse, but it's a blue shirt. This red one sold for $16. This one's more maroon with a 3XL, so it sold for $29. This is another maroon one, so you can't really count the maroon ones. This one had the line cross out, so you don't know what the offer is exactly. And because I didn't have that exact one for this example, I would just type Ralph Short XL because I most likely have a Ralph Short XL. Now it is bringing up button shirts, it brings up our Pima interlock, but because that one's not there, I would grab this custom fit polo and then I would just sell similar off of this blue one. And if I were to do that, I change the title like I did before. I would put uh, the new color, which is red, and then I would fill out just like I did on the last item. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go over here to the right and I'm gonna trash all those items. And now we have our purple and yellow striped one. So with this polo, I'm gonna type Ralph Polo striped short and see if I have anything in my store that that matches this. So right here, we have a Polo Sport, which is not Polo Ralph Lauren, it's actually a different brand. We have Polo Ralph Lauren, short sleeve polo. This is a classic fit, but because classic's in here, that means the size type is gonna be classic, and you're gonna have to change that, and that slows you down. So what you want is the most bare bones striped Polo Ralph Lauren. So that's gonna be this blue one here, that's priced at $12.99 plus $8.99 shipping. So I'm gonna click on this one, brings up a new window and I'm going to do sell similar. So we're going to delete photos, drag over while it's populating. We're going to change this to what we have. Ours is a purple yellow striped and it is a large and not an XL. We're going to copy this one and type in the new SKU. We're going to roll down here. It's mainly purple. If you guys have two colors, you can put multicolor. If it's mainly one color, you put the main color here. We'll change this to large. Scroll on down, short sleeve, regular. This is the fit. So this is what I was saying. If this was classic like that other shirt, you would have to select regular and then it actually deletes the size type when you change the fit. And that's a problem that I don't really like because sometimes I forget to put the size after changing this because I don't scroll up. And then I end up having to do it before I launch the item, which slows the whole process down. We have striped here for the pattern. The material is 100% cotton. If this is set up as 100% cotton or say it's um, you know linen or just something and you're not sure and you can't read close enough here, instead of clicking on what the material is, just take the material off of the listing. Whenever I myself am buying something from eBay, I look at each of the photos tons of times and if it has the material in the photo, they'll be able to see it. They don't necessarily need to search for it. Although if it's linen or cashmere or wool, I do put those materials in, but if it's cotton or polyester, I really don't bother with it. We have the neckline is collared, and then all these other ones I just did not fill out. Condition description, this one is good. And then we're gonna copy and paste the new title, Polo Ralph Lauren, large purple, yellow striped. For this shirt, since purple and yellow is like the Lakers color, which is a really popular basketball team, and because I have not come across many purple and yellow striped Ralph Lauren's, I'm actually gonna price this one higher at $24.99 plus shipping. And I'll probably accept anything over $15 for this shirt. Then once again, everything's done. And then we would just save for later. I'm going to just do this next one at full speed. And we're going to do the striped shirt just so you can see how fast it goes.
So as you can see, even though I'd already done it and I kind of knew what I was going to type, it goes very fast. I would suggest you start with similar items and do a bunch of those in a row so you can get a lot of reps and start doing the same things. I'd also suggest going to Text Blaze. It's a Google Chrome extension and you can kind of fill out those pre-populated messages and that'll save you some time on your descriptions and your condition. I also want to say that listing like this did take me a while to do. One thing I like to do is I like to count how many clicks it takes to do every process and then I like to time myself. So the least amount of clicks and the least amount of movements in the listing is going to increase your speed so you can list more items. And remember, if you list an item that you think you should get a ton of money for, kind of remember you're going to give people a deal on eBay and that you want the profit. Because once you get that profit, you can buy another item. And then once you've sold, you know, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, you know, 15,000 items, you are well versed in how to price your items to get them to sell quickly. And you can just keep adding that money to the bank and you can have a successful eBay career. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I answered your questions. The inventory system, I may do a deeper dive into that later, but for now, that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, how's it going, guys? I wanted to drop this in here so you can see from the screen record what it looks like whenever I'm doing the listing. On my ThinkPad and my external monitor here is where I do most of my listing, but I don't really know how to do the screen share like I'm doing here on this computer. This is the iMac where I do all my editing and I do some other things with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and show you the two listings and then show you how it search comps and build a listing from there. I don't have the photos on this computer, but uh, you'll get the idea. So let's just get straight into this one. So I'm going to take this time here at the end of the video to show you how I would go through it so you guys can see a more clear representation of what the computer looks like and how all that works when I'm doing the listing. So let's get straight into that first one. It was a Polo Ralph Lauren short sleeve XL red Pima soft touch. Okay. Like we got up here, I got my store tab open and then I got my like just regular tab open. It's still under my store, but this one is actually like the store popped up. So I can search my store through this bar as this bar is going to be just eBay in general. So we're going to type Ralph, if I can type Ralph short polo men's XL and then we'll put Pima and see what comes up. All right, so we get the six here. We got the red one here, that's the interlock, so we'll click on that. My little box here is kind of in the way, but we're going to do sell similar off of our own listing. Let it populate. There's high winds right now, and like some power lines went down in my town, so let's hope this makes it. We're going to delete all the photos first, and then we scroll. So we have the Polo Ralph Lauren short sleeve, men's XL red Pima interlock, so we're going to go Pima soft touch, because that's what this one was. Pima soft touch, and then... It's a little different with the Mac, so I'm not going to be as fast. Command A to highlight all the bar, and then Command C to copy, and that's what we want to hold. We would change the custom SKU, which was 140, uh, like 19, I don't remember what it was. And then we're going to go down here. So everything should be pretty close to the same. We got a Polo Ralph Lauren as the brand. We got red, XL, men's, short sleeve, regular. Now I talked about this. If this changes to classic, you guys can see it's going to end up taking this off most likely. See how it just deleted it? And that's why I don't sell similar off of ones that have different fit because it'll take the size off. And then by the time you scroll down, you forget what the size is. So we're going to put this one back up here. And I'm going to explain through this one like I did previously in the video. Um, the condition description. Uh, I did set up text blaze on this because it's a Google Chrome extension. You can use it as long as you have Chrome on your laptop. So we have... Uh, backslash C and that's going to be this condition description that I have for all my items and if it's a hard good I usually just put like great or something and it seems to be fine and this one did have the issue on the back so I would put hole on back like that and then we got the title already saved so we're going to command V to paste and make sure that's in there and like I said before we can um do backslash D and that pre-populates our message here. I have the two X's just to create the space here because if you don't, it'll just be up at the top and you'll have to hit return each time to give yourself that space. So, well, that did it because it was highlighted on the space, but you catch my drift. So we scroll down, we got buy it now, $15.99. I changed it to $12.99, but realistically on that shirt, it probably should have been at $9.99 just because of how competitive it was. But it is winter time, so maybe during the summer they will sell a little faster. We've got the main shipping, and then we're just going to save for later. 
So now we're going to go back to, uh, let's say, I'm going to misspell this. Let's say you search your store and you don't have that uh, Pima Soft Touch or you don't have any polos or, or anything in your store. So what do you do in that situation? You go to your main bar line and you type your title as exact as you can. Ideally, the perfect title the first time. So we're going to go Ralph Lauren. And I say perfect title. Ideally, it's the finished title. Ralph Lauren, short sleeve polo, men's XL red, Pima soft touch. And we're going to command A, command C, or control A, control C to copy and paste. And we'll put used there at the end. So here's our 50. It looks like the promoted ones changed from the last time. And yeah, it's pretty flooded but we are going to roll with it yeah 50 listed 12 sold and like we said we had the blue one the stripe one the maroons the larger size like if this was a 3xl you could probably price it right like they did xlt tall even though that's maroon it's still um look how much more money it commands you know 3xl see the xl is only 9.99 plus the shipping and then this uh xlt is 24.99 plus shipping so that's a huge thing and a lot of people like your general thrift store shopper is not a 3XL tall person or a, a 3XB. So these XLs will most likely be gone in the thrift and there'll be these uh, laying around. Then at the same time, there's more XLs sold in the world than there are 3XBs. So there may be you know, less 3XBs. So what I would do is I would choose one that was the right size, which this example, I think we used XL. So now that we've clicked into somebody's listing, we're going to sell one like this. And we're basically just selling similar off of somebody else's listing. This can be very problematic, and I'm going to show you guys exactly why. So we're going to highlight the title, and we're going to paste in our good title. We're going to put in the custom SKU for our inventory. We will have to look to make sure the item category is correct, because a lot of people that list on eBay, even if they've made solds, don't necessarily do it properly. They got Ralph Lauren. So you have to just be more careful because you have not put anything in here. Now their additional features, it looks like it looks like they're kind of going with us. They did not put very many. They even put less than I would put. So we are going to just go over it. Short sleeve length. The fit is going to be regular. It's a solid shirt. And the neckline is collared. And then collar style, we don't put closure. I do put buttons sometimes. That's really not too necessary. Now for the item condition, nothing populates on somebody else's. If they put it in, it's always blank because eBay knows that it's a different person, different shirt. And you're going to put your condition description. That's really not that big a deal. Neither is this. So we're going to put all that in. Although we did have to do backslash D or whatever you have saved because they don't have anything in here. So that is another couple clicks. And the clicks do add up. You have to put the price here. You have to make sure that offers are on if you want to do offers. It does carry over the main shipping policy. You want to make sure that it's not promoted or anything like that. So let me just say for later. So that listing wasn't too bad, but I've seen listings where they put out like 50 item specifics and you got to click off of each one of those. So I'm going to do this one at full speed just so you guys can get an idea of what this is like. So let's get focused. Ralph striped polo short. We have this green one. I'm going to go with it. We're going to sell similar, and this is our listing. And it did have a stain on the back, so I'm going to have to delete that one because the purple one had no stains. Delete the photos. You're going to drag over and put your new ones in. And then you look at the title. Polar off Lauren Stripe, short sleeve, XL. We're going to delete these. And we are going to put purple, yellow. And I like to talk out loud when I do it just so I make less mistakes, which I'm making a few right now. This little box is telling us we can fill it in. We're going to put our new item specifics, whatever it was. It does fill out purple for us. XL, short sleeve striped, 100% cotton, which it is 100% cotton, but we'll just take it off in case we weren't sure. Stain on back, we're going to delete this one here. Whoops. We're just going to paste it over. Price, this purple one was way more expensive, so we'll do 24. And then that's it. We would save for later. So that's about how fast it is. I just want to put this at the end so you guys could see it more clearly. I know that shot was terrible over there, but um, I wanted to answer the question and get uh, get that 
viewers, you know, question answered so he can get an idea of how he can go a little bit faster. But uh, we're just going to delete this one here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, leave down in the comments if you like the ones with the screen share better than the setup one over here on my other uh, computer. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to put a timestamp so that you guys can just fast forward through this. But I guess you wouldn't have known till the end of the video. So maybe I'll just uh, I'll say see you later. Bye.